Hi, is Paige there? Hi Paige, it's Jessica Faust from Bookends Literary Agency. I'm calling today because I have to tell you how much I absolutely loved your book. I just finished it and I would love to represent you and this book. Congratulations, you just got the call. You officially have an offer of representation from an agent. You are so excited and you are prepared because you have been planning for this. So after the squealing and the screaming and the calling everybody you know to tell them the news, you know it's time for you to take charge and interview the agent. Luckily for you, you have your questions ready to go and you're gonna hit the ground running. Question number one, do you use a written agreement or contract? Now we at Bookends do use a written agreement, and I think these days most agencies do, although when Bookends first started, there were a lot of agencies who still used the old-fashioned handshake agreement. I think now times have changed enough that most use a written agreement. Question number two, do you sign an author for just one book or for more than one? At Bookends, our goal is that we're going to build a career together. Our goal is that this is the first book of many that we'll be representing on your behalf. So our contracts state that we are more or less signing you for this book and your future books. Future books that you and I, you and your agent, agree that you're going to work together on. Now all of that being said, the contract has an easy out. Because at Bookends, we really believe that the agency is the, 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 the relationship is the essence of a good author-agent relationship. Question three, will I be working exclusively with you or will another agent be handling my work? At Bookends, whoever it is that is offering representation will be the agent you're working with. So if it's me, you'll be working exclusively with me. Now there might be a time when you have a second project that's a little outside of my area of expertise, and at that time, you may work with another agent. We may work jointly together, me, one of the other bookends agents, and you. But for the most part, the agent who is offering will be the agent you're working with. Who else at your agency might I be working with? So this ties in with the previous question, but is a little bit different. So at Bookends, you will be hearing and working with other people within the agency. For example, my assistant may be getting in touch with you to get necessary paperwork to put through or to forward your contracts or even on occasion to send you a great review that we saw. Our royalties manager will be the person sending you your royalty statements. Um, and then there will be other people, our sub rights manager will be getting in touch with you about sales or potential sales for uh, foreign rights and things like that. You will be working directly with your agent, but Bookends works as a family, I guess, as a team, and there will be times when you may be hearing from other team members. How do you usually communicate with your authors and how often? For me, it's email. Email's the easiest. Um, we don't have to try to catch somebody when they're not at work or not driving the kids to school or late at night. Especially easy because we have a lot of international clients as far away as Australia, Singapore, South Africa, and trying to schedule phone calls on a regular basis can be quite difficult. How often do I communicate? As often as necessary. If we are actively editing and revising something or negotiating a contract, certainly, we will be in constant conversation. But if a contract is negotiated, you are writing the book and working with your publisher, we may not talk as frequently. The one thing I always say to anybody looking to be represented by me at Bookends is that you will always hear from me. I don't avoid emails. I don't avoid phone calls. If for some reason you have emailed, and you did not get an out of office, or you have called and I did not respond within a day or two, then there's a possibility that the email or the phone message got lost. I will communicate always and I will keep you up to date as much as I can. And I always say to the author, contact me. 
this is a relationship, this is a business partnership, and you need to feel comfortable enough to call me, to email me, anytime you have a question, a concern, you're just wondering what's happening. I like that. I wanna know that you're comfortable in the relationship to reach out. So if you're not hearing from me, it's likely I have nothing to tell you, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't reach out on your own. How hands-on are you editorially? This is a big question for everybody. There are agents who do nothing. They take the book, they send it out. There's nothing wrong with that. There are agents who do a lot of editorial work. There is nothing wrong with that. It really depends on what you want and your expectations from an agent. Now, I was an editor for a lot of years, as were a number of other agents at Bookends. So I tend to be editorially intensive, which means that if you are a brand new author and we're working on a project to get out for submission, we're gonna work on that. We're gonna revise it, we're gonna edit it, and we're going to do it until we feel that that book is as rejection proof as we can possibly make it. And sometimes that could take a few weeks. Sometimes that could take a few months, but we're gonna work on it together. Once the book has sold to a publisher, I tend to back off a little. I like to edit, but I don't micromanage. And at that point in time, it's your editor's choice to work with you and to help make the decisions because editing, like pretty much anything else, is subjective. And the last thing I wanna do as an agent is make you put a lot of time and energy into revisions that your editor wants to undo later. That's not good for your relationship with your editor, it's not good for your relationship with me, and it's really not good for anybody's mental health. So once the book is sold, I am there to give editorial guidance as much as you need it. But typically I like to sit in the wings. If you need me, I'm there. But otherwise I let you get to work with your editor on your own. What is your editorial vision for the book? What changes do you see need to be made, if any? This is a really important question for the author to ask because this really shows whether or not you and the agent have the same vision for the book and are gonna be on the same page moving forward. Now keep in mind, if I'm making an offer of representation and I know that you're likely going to be talking to other agents, I will probably not give you every detail of my editorial letter or editorial suggestions. Because let's be honest, it takes a lot of work, time and energy, and the last thing I want is you taking my letter, running off to another agent, and then selling the book. Call me greedy. However, I also think it's important that you have real understanding of the amount of work I envision. So I will give you a few specific examples usually, talk overall, talk about how I see the book, and we'll go from there. But I think it's important for you to at least have some understanding of what the agent needs or expects or wants from you. And if an agent says nothing and you feel in the back of your head that it needs something, that might be something to consider. What is your submission strategy for the book? Now every agent is different where this is concerned. Some do one editor at a time. Some have a very specific idea of exactly the editor is right for this book and might want to offer an exclusive. Some books have a different strategy from agent from within an agency, so I might have a different strategy for your book than I do for Mary Jo's next door. It depends on the book. But I think understanding what the agent's strategy is, do they only envision that there's two houses for this? Do they envision the long haul? Will they go for months? Will they consider small houses as well as big houses? Will they hit all the big houses or do they only see a select few? Do they submit only to one at a time versus five at a time? And if so, why? So it's hard for me to answer this directly in the video form because it may be different depending on the author's book and the author and my vision for it. But understand that there is no real wrong answer, but it does have to be an answer that you're comfortable with. What I would suggest, or what I would tell you, is that I'm gonna be in it for the long haul. I'm gonna submit that book potentially for years if I have to, and I might resubmit it later as markets change and trends change, but I'm gonna keep going for as long as I believe in that book and as long as there are places I can submit to.
Once I sign, can you tell me what our next steps will be? I could probably do an entire video just on this. I'm going to keep it short for this video because we already have a lot going on. But typically with bookends, your first step when you accept representation will be to sign the contract. That's electronic and it can happen the same day, which is really exciting for us. From there, we will typically start revisions. Like I said earlier, we're gonna go as long as it takes to make a book that you and I are both happy with and that we really feel we're gonna be able to sell. Once the revisions are done, I'm gonna go out on submission and you're gonna get down to writing your next book to keep you busy working on that next thing for me while I am busy working on your current thing. I will keep you updated on the entire submission process. I will keep you updated on rejection letters. I will keep you updated on good news, like the editor is getting others to read it within the house. Whatever I hear, you're gonna be updated on. Once we get an offer, we will do lots of happy dances, we will toast with champagne, and then I'll get down to the brass tacks of negotiating. Depends on the situation, negotiations can vary. You and I will be in constant conversation at this time. I will keep you updated on all of the offers we're getting on all the negotiation points and so on and so forth until you give me approval to accept the offer. Once I do that, you're gonna dig into the book, back to the first book, get into it, start looking at it. I'm going to be negotiating the next round of the contract, which is the actual physical contract that I'm looking at. Typically, we have a boilerplate with most publishers, so it doesn't take a lot but we still need to review it, make sure things haven't changed, and make sure we're happy with these points for this book. Then, many ways, I turn you over to your editor, at which point you're gonna be doing everything you did for me all over again. You're gonna be working on revisions. You're gonna be writing that next book that you already started. You're gonna be doing copy edits, and then you're gonna start getting ready to market and promote the book before it's published. So in a nutshell, those are the next steps. But that's very brief. Like I said, I could do a whole video on probably different segments of that. Since I tend to be a little long-winded with my answers, which I think a lot of my clients will tell you is true, I've already answered this next question, which is once we get an offer from a publisher, what can I expect? What, can, what you can expect is that I am going to negotiate as hard as I can to get you the best deal I can, I can get for you. And you and I will be in constant communication about how you're feeling about that, about questions you have, concerns you have. Every step along the way, we'll be talking about that. Will you communicate to all offers to me before negotiating? Again, I've answered that. But if an agent hasn't, that's a question you're gonna to need to ask. Most agents will. I think it's pretty rare that an agent goes ahead and just accepts the offer. In some cases, especially with a foreign rights deal, the foreign rights agent may be negotiating, but for the most part, you should be looped in every step of the way for the negotiation process. What if my project doesn't sell? The answer to that is easy. We get straight to work on your next book and we sell that one. Are you open to me writing in a different genre or being a hybrid author? This is a very personal question. It's gonna depend on the author and the agent. I am open to you writing in, in a different genre as well as being a hybrid agent. But depending on the genre you choose, will determine my ability to really help you out. My advice is try not to find an agent who can do everything right now. Try to find the best agent for this project because as your career takes shape and takes hold, you may have different opinions of where you wanna go in terms of these other genres and these other types of books. Or as with bookends, we have a number of people on staff and we cover pretty much every genre. So if I can't help you with that, I could team up with another agent. There are lots of alternatives to this. It's not, I don't think that's a question that should be a deal breaker, but I think it's a question that 
you should ask if it's something that you are considering or want to do. At what point would we start discussing my next book idea? It bookends with me right now. I want to know before you start writing that book what your idea is. Is it the right next book? And do I have any suggestions before you start writing, maybe based on the revisions of the last book? So that would be something that before you get into it, or if you're into it, before you get too far into it, it's worth discussing with your agent. Again, my goal is to build a career, which means that each book is a stepping stone to the next thing. In order to make those stepping stones work, we wanna make sure they're going up and not zigzagging all over the place. So I would love to discuss your next book with you whenever you are ready to discuss it. And the last question I have on my list is, how will we work together once my book is sold? And that's something, again, I already answered a little bit, but ultimately, how we're gonna work together is I am going to let you work with your editor. I'm not a micromanager and I don't like to play middleman. Also, I think it's really important that an author and her editor build a really strong relationship on their own because your editor is your voice inside the publishing house. She's the one fighting for you with sales and marketing and the, cup, the art department and the copy department. So she's the one you want on your side. I am there really to act as your advisor. Uh, I am going to defend you when <laughs> defending needs. I will definitely give my opinion. I will help out with the cover and with cover copy and in any way, shape or form. If things are going bad or you're not happy with something, I'm the one who's happy to step in, talk to the editor and have the hard conversations. But ultimately, for the most part, in a lot of ways, I step back. I'm there when you need me. I'm there when your editor needs me. I'm there to help out and I am involved. It's not like I'm, you know, headed off to Tahiti and you can't find me. You, I will be CC'd on a lot of emails. I will be very involved. I'm just taking on a different role once that book is sold. Whew, you did it. You asked the hard questions. You had the hard conversation. Now it's time to sit down, pour yourself a big old glass of wine, and really think about the conversations you had with those agents. It's not just about having the right answers, because in some ways there are no right answers. It's about feeling in your gut which agent felt right to you, which answers felt right to you, and really, most importantly, who did you feel most comfortable with? Who can you call when you're having your worst moment? when you're having your best moment, when things are downright scary, because that, that's the agent for you. So I'm wishing you all the luck in the world. The blog has all the questions in writing. You can probably just cut and paste them into your own form, keep them in your own notebook, write at your desk, and be ready to go, because it's coming. <music>